Nicole here with Obscure Reptiles and Caging and today I'm going to be showing you some of our red Aki monitors. So let's get started. Hey guys, so one of my friends Miguel came over and helped me clean all of our Aki monitor enclosures. So thank you very much Miguel. Um, what we did was we went through we cleaned everybody. Um, in this video, we're going to show you guys exactly what we use, what kind of substrates, how we set them up, things that we do in the enclosures, um, and we're going to show you some really nice footage of our Ackies. Um, so quite a few of them are holdbacks. We have four enclosures, and we had two that were very good at escaping when they were babies. Who they? Those two were in a smaller enclosure. We just moved them into one of the larger enclosures and it is now two weeks later and still Houdini and Blaine have not escaped so they are doing very good. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of footage. So what we do is we normally feed things like crickets, dubias, stuff like that and normally we don't have to clean their cage very often because the crickets will eat pretty much all of the waste that's in there and they actually do so well that they breed in there. So what we also like to do is the food dish I like to use is a glass dish that's uh, pretty shallow, um, pretty wide, but we actually kind of bury it down in the dirt a little bit so things like baby crickets, stuff like that, will actually fall into the dish and um, Ackies do not eat any sort of vegetables, anything like that, but I'll actually slice a carrot or a potato and put that in the bottom of that dish and it kind of attracts all of the baby crickets and stuff that are reproducing and growing in there. They will then fall into that dish and then the Ackies will eat the bugs that fall in there. That's something that we do and has worked really well for the last few years. Um, but we kind of let it sort of be a bioactive enclosure. Um, but we do clean them every two to four months depending on how many Ackies are in that cage, if they're breeding, and what time of year it is. Because depending on the year, the time of year, uh, they eat a lot more or a lot less. So what you see us doing is we have a scoop and we took every single thing out that was in their enclosure and we also went and we made sure to scoop out all of the old dirt and sand. So what we use is it is a pesticide free, um, there are, is no chemicals, there is no, nothing in dirt, it's just plain old dirt and we also use play sand. The reason we do that is it's safe for the animals. Again, has no chemicals or anything like that in there, but that is play sand and just plain old regular dirt. You can buy them at Home Depot, that's where we go. And generally I will put a whole bag of dirt in an enclosure and half or at least a quarter bag of sand in each cage as well. If you are not breeding your Ackies, your cage would be a little bit different than mine, but what I do is for our breeding enclosures, we put most of the dirt and sand towards the back of the enclosure that way they have a little bit of digging area and towards the front we have very minimal that way it's a little bit harder for them to push the dirt and sand into the tracks of the glass front cage you don't want to use acrylic you want glass because it can actually warp over time because they need a 160 degree hot spot so something so warm will actually um, deform the acrylic in the front and you'll have to be replacing it pretty often. That's why we just make it easier and just get glass from the beginning. We have a little bit of a substrate barrier but they like to dig a lot. They love to move things around and rearrange so they do get dirt and sand up into the tracks which makes, which makes it a little bit difficult but it's a lot easier if you push most of it to the back in the beginning. Because they are breeding Aki monitors, we have a lay box which you see in all the enclosures. Even one of our enclosures is just a female. If you have a female Aki, she could still lay eggs. They could, they would be infertile eggs, but she can still lay eggs. So you want to make sure that she's comfortable um, and has a safe place to lay eggs because the number one killer of Aki monitors, or for female Aki monitors, is um, being egg bound. They don't have a comfortable place to lay their eggs. They're going to hold them in too long, and unfortunately, that Aki could pass away. So even our lone female, she still has a lay box. Um, the best way I have found is they will not lay their eggs unless it's an 82 to 85 degree area. So I actually put the lay box right underneath the basking area and then I put a slate rock on top of it which gets us like 150 to 160 depending on what time of day you're checking the temperature. Um, and that pushes down into the substrate below and I normally can get a really good 85 degree temperature, 84, 83 to 85 
all the way to the bottom because when they lay their eggs they love to dig to the very bottom of their little lay box they lay them way down there and they pack a bunch of dirt and sand over top um, inside the lay box I generally do more like 50% dirt, 50% sand compared to the enclosure themselves. That way it stays a little bit more humid, a little more moist in there. And I do spray them down at least twice a week just to make sure I'm maintaining a good moist area inside their lay boxes. We put a bunch of stuff in their cages, anything from tree branches, which have all been um, fully cleaned and sanitized. I'm going to do a video shortly on how to do that. For guys, people who don't know, you can do an oven method or you can do a soaking method. I'll show you guys both of them. Um, depending on how big the branches are, normally the soaking tends to be a little easier. But if you know you got a really large oven, you could do either one. But I will make a video of that shortly for you guys. So a lot of this is stuff like driftwood. Um, branches, we've got a lot of cork bark, we've got ceramic hides, slate rocks, PVC pipes and tubes, hide boxes, and we've actually got hidden, we take snake lay boxes, we actually take snake hides, something like this right here, and what we do is we bury them almost completely and leave a little hole right in the front so they can find it, and they love to feel like they're digging, you know, digging way down and actually being completely submerged and covered up like that. So if you don't do stuff like that, they could actually start to dig um, tunnels and holes and stuff like that. So we do that for them. We take nice little PVC pipes like I'll show you here and we cut them to length about 12 to 16 inches and that we have a lot of different diameter PVC. We've even got itty bitty PVC for the babies and we hot glue them together in a pyramid and put them in their cages that way every baby can have a different location they can have some place they feel nice and comfortable because Aggies love to feel secure and in a tight location uh, pretty pretty much the uh, tighter the location the better they feel the, if you can actually see I'll see if I can find some footage or pictures um, but between for example if you have like a glass or acrylic front cage and there's just the tiniest gap and if that Aki can squeeze in between the wall and the cage and the glass they will they will squeeze their bodies as flat as possible to get in there because it makes them feel comfortable and secure it's just part of having an Aki uh, so if you have a piece of uh, cork bark or PVC or branch that has a hole in it and you think oh they'll never get in there they definitely will that's why Houdini and Blaine are so good at getting out uh, because they just love to squeeze in the tightest, smallest little areas. So you have to be very careful of that. But we like to make every cage a little bit different. I will keep the same things in every cage, but I'll slightly change where they are in the enclosure to keep it a little bit different. I like to stack normally um, the hides and stuff at dirt level. I put a couple of pieces of cork bark right down on the dirt so they can actually dig and make themselves a little cave underneath. And then I'll stack more things like branches and cork bark above that level. That way they can actually have a place to run around. Um, I like using actually like fish ceramic things. Like we've got um, one that looks like a castle, one that looks like a tree, a skull, things like that. They actually hold temperature and heat really well. And they have a lot of nooks and crannies for them to actually be able to climb into. I found that they really enjoy those. And then I like to take the branches at the very top but you have to make sure that they're pretty sturdy because they will climb over everything. Ackies are very high energy animals. They're very high strong. They love to run around, check out everything you do. Um, some of these enclosures you'll see dirt smears all the way up and down all the cages because it, for whatever reason a couple of the cages love to run through the water then run through the mud then run up the side of the wall and then repeat and then you see hundreds of dirt marks. Uh, we actually clean and sanitize the glass every time we do this big cleaning but they love to just smear up and rub up on everything and some of them are very dirty and messy. Uh, the only one who really isn't is Dart which is the only one who's actually by herself. Um, she's a little princess, doesn't like to get dirty, doesn't like to get wet. Um, but they all have their own personalities and some of them are going to like things um, a lot more than others. So for example, I've actually had Ackies who every night will sleep in, the, for example, the same PVC pipe and I had sold those Ackies. I actually shipped them with their PVC pipe to make them feel comfortable to allow that to be in their new enclosure because Ackies seem to be very, they are very intelligent, but they seem to be very stuck in their ways when it comes to they want to sit on the left side of the cage, they want to be in this PVC pipe, and they want it to be buried. If you change certain things like that that they're very intent on, they tend to start acting almost upset, 
and you know you'll see that they're very restless so I like to keep certain things that each animal likes in a certain way um, but so here you, you're gonna see the cleanest as these cages are gonna be because it's only you know two weeks later and I can see a bunch of smears but not a lot of eckies in these cages because they again are very dirty when it comes to they love to run through the water through the dirt but they're being you know enriched by being able to do that so there's not much you can do other than clean up when possible but I hope you guys like this footage um, some of these are our very red holdbacks a couple of them were for sale before but we just ended up keeping them because they were just too nice looking but if you are looking for a Aki monitor we actually have three Aki's from our very high red and black um, adults that are going to be available hopefully soon 120 days is how long it takes to hatch and they're actually supposed to hatch out it's either this weekend or next weekend so if you were looking for an Aki monitor we've only got a couple of eggs in this clutch um, but if you are interested you can reach out to us on our Twisted Reptiles Facebook page or twistedreptiles.com you can actually email us directly but we wouldn't be posting these babies on our morph market until they were actually ready to go but these guys normally eat a day or two out of the egg and they're ready to go just a few weeks later so if you guys are looking for some really high-end Aki monitors shoot us a message um, but that's it for this video uh, if you got any questions you can put them in the comments below if you haven't already please subscribe we do a couple of videos every single week and I'll see you guys in the next video